Today, we're adding icons to our Shopify store. You can use them in all sorts of ways, but ultimately these icons tell your customers what's great about your product or brand. And in this video, I'll be showing you our custom solution on how you can add this to your store too. But before we start, I want to thank you for watching these videos. And if you want your customization in the next one, subscribe and prompt us with your request in the comments below. All right, let's add some icons. So we're gonna be doing everything here on the Dawn theme, but this should work with any of the free Shopify themes. Uh, this is Dawn version 13, uh, but should work with older versions as well. So let's first customize, and we're going to go to the product page. Uh, let's just change our default product. Okay, so what we can do first is we can add a block and you can actually see here, there's icon with text. And it will add these icons right here. And you can move it up. Let's put it right underneath the buy button. Um, and so built into the Shopify themes already is this block where uh, it gives you a whole bunch of options for different icons, right? So we can uh, make it a shirt or plant. There's a lot of options already here. And we can even change the heading. So we could say plant, uh, you know, the second one, free returns, let's say, and um, free shipping. So with just the built-in features, there's already a lot you can do. Um, we can even select different images. So let's say you don't want to use the icons, you can choose your own image. So I've got these different icons here already queued up so we can change our shipping one to this truck that uh, we have. And if this works for you, then great. You'd, you're already done. You don't have anything more you need to do. But um, I know for me that there's some features that I'd like to have. So for example, here, uh, you can only have a maximum of three icons. So if we actually remove one of these headings, it'll hide that icon and then you only have the two left or you can you know, hide a second one, for example. Um, and that's what it'll look like. You'll have this one icon here, but you can't add more. The other thing you can't do is let's say uh, you wanna put the materials of your shirt. Let's add these back actually, uh, easy returns. And let's just remove this and go free shipping. Okay, so let's say you wanna do the materials, but um, for each shirt, there's a slightly different material. Unfortunately, you have to use these exact same three icons for any product that uses this template. Um, so even if, uh, even if we have our shoes, right? So if we go back and change this back to a shoe, you know, if this was 100% cotton, uh, it doesn't really make too much sense for shoes, does it? So these don't get updated dynamically. What you see is what you get. Let's change this back to the t-shirt. So what we're gonna do is we're going to add our own customization that allows us to modify the number of icons that we're gonna show, and it's gonna be dynamic to the product. Okay, let's get started. To make this customization, we're gonna create meta objects, meta fields, and we're gonna edit some code. But don't worry if you've never done any of this before because I'm gonna take you through it step by step. The first thing we're going to do is we're gonna hop into the meta fields area. So that's settings, custom data, and we're going to create a meta object. So add definition, and we're going to call this icon with text. And it's gonna create um, a type icon with text with underscores there. Um, and we're gonna want this to be exactly as it is here because our code is gonna be looking for it later. So in the fields, we're going to add a single line text. We'll call this name. And uh, we'll use this as our display name. And we're also going to add an expression. So right here, we're gonna add this right there. So what this is gonna do is it says that the name format has to be alphanumeric uh, with dashes and underscores only. So we can't add spaces, we can't add special characters. 
And the reason for that is because in the code, we uh, are also going to be using the name as a variable. Um, and it can't take characters like spaces. OK, so let's add. Um, and next, we're going to add a file. And we're going to make this a list of files. We're going to just use images only. And we're going to call this icons. And then finally, we have a single line text. It's going to be a list of text. And we're going to call this just text. OK, so we'll add that as well. And now we can save. Now that we have our meta object, we can go into our products and create a new meta field for the product. So we're going to call this icons. Um, and then it's going to have this namespace and key. Make sure it's exactly the same here because our code is looking for that. Uh, and then for the type, we're going to have this as a type meta object. And we're going to use the meta object we just created, icon with text, uh, and one entry. OK, so we're going to save. OK, so we have our product. And we're going to scroll down to the bottom, and we're going to see our new meta field that we just created, icons. And so we can see here that we can add an entry. Uh, but there are no entries yet, so we need to create one. So let's head back out. And now we see all the different meta objects that are available. We're going to go to icon with text. And we're going to add an entry. So here, we're going to call this um, icons grouping one. And then we can select the icons that we want to use for this. So I'm going to use, let's say, uh, this one, uh, this one, and this one. OK, and let's just save that first. OK, let's go back to our product. And now we can see that we have our icons grouping one that we just created. So let's select that and then save. So now we've created a meta object. We've created a meta object entry, which contains these icons that we want to use for our product. And we've added it to the product itself via meta field. Um, so that's all set up and put into place. Now we just need to add some code to make it show up on the page. So let's do that now. We'll come back to our themes area. And uh, before you make any changes, just make sure to duplicate your theme. In case anything goes wrong, you can always just revert back to the old version. OK, so let's edit code. And we're going to create a new snippet called icon with text custom dot liquid. And then we're just going to copy and paste our code into here and save. Next, we're going to go to main dash product dot liquid. And here we're going to search for icon with text. And we're going to see that uh, it shows up here. We're just going to create a little bit of space underneath. And we're going to paste a new when and a new render. So this is going to be looking for a custom version of the icon with text. And it's going to render the liquid file that we just created. And now we're going to scroll down until we hit the schema section. And then in here, we're going to just look for icon with text again. And we'll see a section here with the icon with text. So this whole section here is for the original icon with text. And we're just going to place our settings for the, uh, the new custom version right underneath. So we're going to see here there's a curly bracket and the square bracket. We're just going to paste it right in between, just like that. Um, and then because this is a new section, we're just going to add a comma between the previous one and this last one here. And we'll save. And now the last step is we're going to create uh, a new section. So right here under sections, add new section. And we're also going to call this icon with text custom dot liquid. And um, you can delete everything that's in there already uh, and just paste in the new code. OK, and save. 
And there we go. That's all the code changes that we're going to be doing. So now I'm going to come back to the theme editor and we're just going to refresh the page. Um, actually, let's save this first so we can keep our original icons in there. Um, and then I'm just going to refresh now. And what we're going to do is we're going to go back to add block and we can see here now we have a new option for icon with text custom. And we can see here we've got our icons. Let's just drag it up to below the, the other ones. Uh, and there we go. Those are the three that we selected. Now, one of the first things you might notice is that there's no text underneath. So uh, I just wanted to show this to you first that you can add icons without adding text, um, which wasn't available uh, on the default version, right? Because once you deleted that text, then it also removes the icon. So here we can actually do icons without text. But if you do want text, then let's come back to our meta object entry definition, which is right here, where the three that we selected. And we've got this list of text that we can add. So we can see here that there's uh, a customer's icon, a return icon, and a shipping icon. So in the same order as they show up for the icons, we can do, um, let's say, over 100,000 happy customers. And we can add uh, easy returns. And we can add uh, free shipping. OK, so let's save that. And if we come back to our theme editor, and let's just save and refresh, we can now see that we've got our icons with the text underneath. OK, so let's explore some of the other features here. We've got uh, a different layout. So we've got horizontal or vertical. So if you wanted to stack them on top of each other like that, you can do that. Uh, this feature is also available in the default version. Right? So we can actually also stack these. So that one isn't a new option. Um, but then we've got uh, the number of icons per line if you're doing the horizontal layout, and the number of columns uh, if you're doing the vertical layout. So let's explore what those can look like, actually. Um, so let's come back here. Let's add. Let's actually create a new entry. All right, so we've created this first entry. Let's add another entry. And we're going to call this icons grouping two. And we're going to select some more. So let's select. Um, so we had this one, this one, this one. Let's do that and that. OK. So we've got five icons this time. Uh, let's add the text. So um, we had 100,000 happy customers. We had easy returns. We had free shipping. Um, and then we have a perfect fit guarantee. And we've got made in USA. OK, so those are the five that we have there. Let's save. And now let's go back to our product. And we're going to change the meta field from the icons grouping one to icons grouping two. And we're going to save. And so now if we come back to our theme editor and refresh. We can see that the icons have changed to the new grouping that we just did. And we've got these two extra icons. And so when we have icons per line three, it'll go to a maximum of three, um, and then just go to the next line afterwards. Uh, if we do four, then it'll kind of add the four in line like this. Um, and then the last one's going to show up there. Uh, and five, we can put them all side by side, um, just like that. Um, but you can see here that maybe in some cases, the text doesn't quite work as well because of how small it is. So maybe we want to go back to three. Same thing on the column side. If we decide to do a vertical layout, we've got all of them in a single column. But if we want to, say, add a second column, then we can do that. And it can look like this. Uh, also, we can change the size. So if we want these to be a little larger, a little smaller, we can update that, get some bigger icons. Uh, same thing with text. You can get some bigger text smaller text. It's really up to you on how you want to customize this, but the options are there to adjust to make it your own. 
Okay, so that already gives us a ton of features if you want to add these uh, icons to your product information. But maybe you want to add your icons to a different part of the product page, right? So instead of in the product information, maybe we want to actually place them underneath here. So that's why earlier we created a section. So we can add a section and we can scroll to the bottom icon with text custom. And it's going to work very much in the same way, right? So we have those same features. Uh, we can adjust the size. We can adjust the text font. Um, really up to you on how you want to do it, but we can place it on the other parts of the product page. And we can say, drag this up and get it between uh, the product information section and your related product section. Now, because this is a section, you can also add it to other pages, not just the product page. Let's say we go to a collection page. Okay, so let's say we want to add some icons here. Um, let's do that right now. But you can see here that there's no icons showing up. Why is that? Well, it's because we're actually mapping the icons to read from the product meta field. But a collection page doesn't have a product meta field to it. So in this case, what we're going to do is we're actually going to change the icon source. We're going to make this a meta object entry. And we can actually just type in the entry that we want to use. So here we actually have two entries, icons grouping two and icons grouping one. So let's just use two. So we'll just copy and paste our name and paste it into this box right here. And we can see that the icons show up. And again, you have all the same options to say adjust the icon size, adjust the text size, uh, adjust the number of icons per line, right? So if we want to have this go onto the second row, you can do that. The difference that you need to keep in mind here is that this is a fixed list of icons. So for any collection that is going to be part of the default collection, it's going to show these same icons here. It won't change per product. So that's just something to keep in mind whenever you're using the meta object entry source. Now, if we just save and go back to our product, we can see that the icon source setting is also here. So right now it's set to the product meta field. And this will be looking for the meta field in all of our different products. So it's dynamically changing. Uh, but we can also make it static. So we can use the meta object entry. You'll see that disappears. But if we put in our uh, entry name, it'll pull the icons grouping to icons, and it'll show it here. And this way, you can make it static. So any product that has this template is going to show this. So that way, if you want to show the same icons for all of your products, you don't have to change it individually in the uh, meta field for each one of them. You just do it once right here. But if you do want it dynamic, then you do have to use the product meta field. OK, so let's change the icon size a little bit smaller. Uh, let's save. And then let's take a look at the live site. So we'll just refresh. And we've got our icons showing up. Now, if we go to a completely different product, so let's go to these, uh, say, sweatpants here, they're not going to show because the meta field hasn't been set up for this product. And the reason why we want to potentially do it by product is because each product's a little bit different. So let's say we've got these, uh, these sweatpants here. Let's go back to our product area and let's take a look at our sweatpants. Okay, so these are the ones. And let's create another icon grouping. So we're going to add an entry. And we're going to call this icons grouping three. And let's select our icons. So let's use similar ones, but they're going to have a slight difference. So um, do this one, this one, this one, uh, this one. And then we'll use the Canadian flag this time. OK, and let's go 100,000 happy customers. We'll do easy returns, free shipping. Perfect fit 
guarantee. And made in Canada. And save. So now let's go back to our product. Scroll down to the Metafields area and let's select icons grouping three and save. And now if we refresh, we can see our icons. And we can see that the section icons are pulling from the same product meta field. Uh, but if we come back to our theme editor, maybe we want this to be more static. So we can actually change this back to um, icons grouping two. And we'll change this to the meta object entry and save. Okay, if we refresh, we can see here, it doesn't have to be the same. Okay, so there's a ton of different features that we've added here. You can change the size of these icons, you can change the text, you can change the way they're laid out. Um, you can make them dynamic. So there's a lot of different ways you could use a dynamic feature here. Maybe some of your products are made up of different materials, or uh, if you've got skincare, maybe they're made up of different ingredients. Um, you can create any number of meta object entries and then map them to the relevant products that you want to show so that you can have uh, different icons for different classes of products or even for every single product, it could be a, a different set of icons if you want. That I think is super powerful um, and gives you a lot of flexibility. Um, and on top of that, it's not just for the product information. We've had this section. You can put it onto your collection page. Um, you can put it on your product page. You can put it on any page that you can add a section. So there's a ton of flexibility on how you want to use this one as well. Um, if you've got a whole bunch of awards, then you can add them here as well. And so that's it. I hope you like this customization. And I hope it gives you the flexibility to add icons in any way that you need. And as always, if you have any questions, just add them in the comments. Thanks, and I'll see you in the next one.